We use this room more than anybody else. Plus, we volunteer. Looks pretty clean to me. Yeah, well, you just make sure you get that whole bleeding bag. They get pretty dirty. Mark, can you move your feet? Thanks. And we gotta get this place cleaned up today. The drama class is gonna rehearse here tonight. Tonight? Mm -hmm. We still got a lot of surface area to cover around here. Hey, Mark, I've done three pots to your one bean bag. You're wasting your time with that big lump of soap. Looks like a pretty good lump of soap to me. Yeah, but it's not the best shape for the job. Look, here, I want to show you something. Watch. You're wasting time and energy by doing this over and over again. That's why they make soap into a powder, because it dissolves quicker. Look, see that? A lot of little particles dissolve quicker than one big lump of soap. So you can cover a lot more ground, faster and easier, and make a lot less work. Ah, uh, that's the hasty approach. You sound like some sudsy TV lady. Well, gee, Mark, why not make every cleaning day as simple as 3, 2, 1? Just remember, with any surface, your best bet is... 3, 2, 1! When I'm chasing some speeder, this is what holds me to the highway. Treads. One surface that grabs a hold of another surface. Concrete. You know, surfaces aren't just there. They come in different shapes, and each one has a job to do. Today, we're going to try to show you a lot of different kinds of surfaces all at work. This one, <laughs> it puts in overtime when the rubber meets the road. Hey, Poncho. Hey, Ponch! Ponch! Hey, Trine, watch where you're driving that thing. I'm a pedestrian. Man. Yeah, well, just don't walk where I haven't been then. Hey, why do you have to bother? You're just going to put the rug right back over the floor anyway. We have to. It's to protect the floor. It's got to have a protective surface or everybody's feet will just grind the dirt right into it, even under the rug. Whose vehicle is that? Mr. Woods. You see, it smooths out just the right layer of wax over the floor. Just like a lot of machines that smooth out surfaces today. Some of them are really fancy rigs, too. What's this big crawler? A Zamboni ice maker. See, when the ice gets rough, along comes Zamboni shaving down the rough ice and oozing out a slick of hot water, which then freezes into a perfectly smooth surface. Can't the ice just be plain, ordinary slippery, like your floor? Not for a skater. They sharpen my skates by grinding it flat first, and then they put an edge on it. And it goes slightly inward. I'm Catherine Healy, and I'm 10 years old, and I'm a figure skater and a ballet dancer. I started skating when I was three, and I've been dancing since I was about four. No, 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 no! No! no. <laughs> get out of here! Come on, get out of here! I quit! No! <laughs> Can't quit! Can't be a quitter. Come on, get up. Knees first. <laughs> I like you from falling down like that. Well, oh, for one, you don't. You're not pushing. You're going. You're trying to go sideways, uh -huh. and you can't do that in skate. So you can only go front, 
or back. Or back. You can't. So if I go sideways, I go plop. Yeah, you go boom. <laughs> now how do I get back up? Well. Wait. <laughs> no, wait. Wait. Get on your knee. Get on your knee. Okay. Right, now. Now what? Turn up your foot. Right, now get up. There. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now. Right. Why don't you show me some spins or something like that? How do you do a spin? Okay. Well, usually you'll do it from crossovers. <laughs> Legs have to do some work too. They go like, they pull in, and then they have to really push downwards. I don't know if you can hear me while I'm talking. Yeah, I hear it. Yeah. I mean, you know, because it turns yeah. out it's like, I saw you skating really fast. How did you stop yourself from skating so well, fast? Well, <laughs> um, there's a way that you can do it, you know. You, you're skating, say, and you put this foot like this, and then just let it drive along the ice. It creates more friction, and so you stop. It, it, it makes like a skid on the ice. Catherine, why is it better to skate, like, on a warm day instead of a cold day? Well, see, the ice melts. See, metal makes ice, the ice melt, like, yeah. and you go faster. You know, you get more run out of it. Oh, so if the, if the more, the, the wetter the ice is when you're skating, the less friction you have? And if it's real cold, the yeah. ice is dry and you can't, yeah, and right. it, like, holds you back because there's too much yeah, friction. Yeah, you're, like, right on the surface of the ice. Uh -huh. you know. And that's no good, because then you, you can't move. Yeah, you ought to dig in like... You're trying to build up a surface, and I'm trying to get down to one. I mean, look at this pot. What is that, old dirt? Oh, rust. Uh -huh. What are you using on it? Steel wool and elbow grease. Hey, you know what happened to that pot? It's the same as far as the surface action is concerned as if it got burned. It got rained on, Mark, not burned. Well, oxidized. Oxidized? Is that like when my mother's silver tarnishes? Right, Tree. Right, it's the oxygen and the air combining with things like silver. Right. If something oxidizes real fast, that's a fire. But if it oxidizes real slow, like that pot, then that's rust. But this pot is iron, Mark. You can't burn iron. Well, hand me that hunk of steel in your hand. I just said it's iron. Other hand. Oh, this? This is only steel wool. Still steel. Watch this. What are you doing, Mark? Steel too. Hey, wait a second. Is this safe? Don't worry, I'll be really careful. I mean, it's not a good idea for little kids to do it without supervision. But we've got some water here just in case. Now, show you. Oh, hey, wow. it's on fire. Yeah. See? Now, you couldn't set fire to a steel girder because there's too much steel for all that surface. But with this little shredded up stuff here, there's lots of surface area for the fire and the oxygen to catch on to and ignite. Remember you showed me those soap particles that dissolve faster than the big lump of soap? Well, same thing here. Yeah, when you split something up, you create more surface area. That's what makes the difference. Here, let me show you with an apple. You see, when you cut the apple, right, you create another surface. And then the more you cut it, the more surfaces you have. You can just... Right. You know, it's just like wood. You know, you can't light a big log with just a match, but take some shreds of it, some splinters, and they'll burn. You know, surfaces really do make the difference. Hey, you should see what some really tiny... Come on, you gotta keep, no, on, keep rolling. Oh, right. There you go. <laughs> we got it. Now, first you get the floor all nice and shiny with a great coat of wax, and then you flop a rug on top of it. I mean, how much protection does this floor need? Different surfaces do different things, Mark. Look, aren't you a lot more comfortable on this one than you would be on a coat of wax? Grant you that. Right. Now, not only that, but do you know that this one is cutting down all the noise around here? See, the shaggy surface absorbs the sound waves that will bounce off a hard floor and echo everywhere. Yeah? Yeah. Yo! <laughs> oh, right. You're right. <laughs> Terrific piece of carpet you got here. But can it fly? Afraid not, Mark. Hey, but think of all the things that can, strictly on how their surfaces are shaped. dust the plants too? Every leaf. You gotta do them all, Mark. 
Each leaf is a part of the whole surface that the plant puts out to the sun. Each leaf is like a little solar panel to catch the sunlight. Can't do that so well if it's dusty. That's how the plant lives. How do we dust this one? Not with those spines. Hey, remember when Frank Bowman came to visit? Why are cacti different from other plants? Well, they're very different from other plants in their ability to go for longer periods of time without water than the average plant. And the way they're made makes it to the point where they can shrivel up if they see. You notice that some of these are coordinated almost like a, an accordion. And what this does is this helps the plant that when there's a large amount of water to swell up without bursting. And also, if it's not too much water, it can go down very thinly. Yeah. You see these small ones right now in, out in the desert, they get to be tremendous plants. Yeah. Oh yeah, some, you do realize that the saguaro, the uh, plant that grows primarily in Arizona, can get to be up to two and a half to three stories high. Whoa. And some of them only, some of them <laughs> weigh tons but the, uh, but the real thing is about these is that the conquistadors, when they came through the Mexican area of our country many years back, they wrote their names on the plants. You know, like Juan Cortez, Seville, Spain, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's nothing new. But the thing is that uh, some of those plants are still living today with that same, those same inscriptions on them, too. They last that long? Yes, right. They last that long. If you see a picture of a desert and you see one saguaro stem that's maybe about a story and a half high, and it doesn't have a branch, it's not 75 years old yet. They don't branch until they're after 75 years old. So if you see them with a lot of branches, He's been around a while. Oh, <laughs> He's been around a long while. Yeah. So there's a lot of things to do with these. Uh, there, many years back, on plant, plants that were called nupalias that are shaped similar to this type, they used to breed an insect called a cochineal insect. And the insect, when squeezed or broken down, produced a red dye that they used to color lipsticks many years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, non-cancerous lipstick <laughs> but the thing is that uh, they have a lot of uh, purpose for people in, in uh, Southern California and Mexico they have what's called nopalitos which are the young pads of a nopal cactus and they boil that cut it up and they use that as something to eat uh, wow. you'd have to adjust uh, to the taste of it but it is a staple for them I read somewhere that cactus um, plants have spines Oh, yeah, sure. Why is that? What, what are they? Well, this is very unique and very, very different from other plants in the sense that cactus have spines and other plants have thorns. And those spines are coming out of what are known as aerial cushions. Uh, this is very unique in the sense that from those aerial cushions can either come uh, flowers, fruit, or other plants. That's what separates it from another type of a plant. Hey, Mark, look at the leaves on this plant. 
They're really special. It's a Venus flytrap, and it lives in the swamp. Look what it does. Now that we're done cleaning, fixing, and dusting, it's time for a few relaxing sounds. All right. Great. Whenever there's trouble, we'll spare all the double with a black home game. If you've got the crime, we've got the time with a black home game. What are you studying now? To be a square knot? A lotus flower. Fair. Looks more like a geranium to me. Mr. Bloodhound left his raincoat again. Oh, that's okay. It's not raining. Now, that's better. Remember, we have that new disc cutter go to tonight. I'll get it. But only if you'll watch my new magic trick. I'll watch. I'll watch. Bloodhound Detective Agency, whenever there's trouble, we're there on the double. Mr. Bloodhound isn't here. Yeah? Madame Dubarry? Hercules? Oh, the circus. Got it. We'll be right there. Take the scissors. What's up? Now, cut the rope. Right in the middle, Vicky. Who called? Snip, snip, snip. Come on. What was that message, Ricardo? Oh, something about a flea napping. What's a flea napping? Now, watch me put the rope back together again. Flea napping? Circus. The flea circus? Yeah, Professor Baldini said someone stole his trained flea. Is this the address? Yeah. Well, let's go. I said I'd watch your trick, but I didn't say when. The grand opening is closed, my sparrows. Bloodhound Detective Agency. Oh, who'd want to steal fleas? Fleas? World famous artists. <laughs> Dear Madame Dubarry, Queen of Ballerina, my dashing chariot racers, and Hercules, the strongest flea in the world. My family, my loved ones. Do you have any idea who might have burgled your artiste? Of course. That art scoundrel Pugs. Who's he? <laughs> An imposter of pulicology. Of what? A professor of fleas. But the man's a fraud. He couldn't train a flea to... to bite. Tell us what happened exactly. I wasn't here, but my new assistant sleeps in the back. Uh, Hank! <laughs> Had it happened in the night. Okay. Stolen last night. Yep. I set my alarm for nine o'clock this morning. Didn't want to oversleep on the big day. Was tuckered out, so went to bed early. Eight o'clock. Got a good 13 hours sleep. Okay, so Professor Pugs broke in sometime between eight last night and nine this morning. Quiet as a mouse, too. I'm a light sleeper. Can you give me a description of Professor Pugs? I never laid eyes on him. I don't bother myself with his kind of circus riffraff. An Englishman, I'm told. And wears a monocle in his eye like some blooming English gentleman. Vicky, still doesn't look Jimmy. Fresh paint. Not a mark on it. Pugs had yourself a key. Must have found it in the dustbin. What's a dustbin? That's what they call a trash can. Where? In England. Dustbin. And that door wasn't chimmied. Something wrong about the way Hank set his clock. Ah, uh, 
I have it. Professor Baldini, get ready for your grand opening. I believe the fleas are still on the premises. One of the clues is in Mr. Hank's clock. The mystery is solved. Careful where you step. The fleas may be on the floor. I didn't say they got loose. No one broke in here last night. And who stole the professor's fleas? You did. Horse feathers. Didn't you say you set your alarm for nine this morning and went to bed at eight last night? That's right. And you didn't hear a sound? Not until the alarm went off at nine this morning. Impossible. If you set your alarm for nine and went to bed at eight, it started ringing in one hour. Your alibi is a fake. Hank. I think his name is Professor Pugs. What? In my own employee? He said dustbin for trash can. That's English English, isn't it? And I think his accent is phony, too. What have you done with my circus troupe, you unspeakable rascal? What indeed? Goodbye and farewell, you old fool. The suitcase! You're all tricked. My dear little boy, come here. An artiste. Stop him. Oh, my free hotel. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, Madame Dubarry. How exquisite you look. Ah, my charioteers, hello. And Hercules, what a handsome devil. <laughs> Almost showtime, my pets. 321 Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.